Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday's Witness. I'm here with Steve LaCostro, and we're talking about evangelism and the Great Commission. And today I want to be in Acts chapter 7 because we find this devoted follower of Jesus Christ, Stephen. He's a man full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, and um, he begins to be maligned. And in the midst of being slandered, he's then brought before authorities, and he brilliantly shares the history of God's salvation plan to the Jews, and then of course culminates with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is the gospel that brings salvation to those who believe. And so in the midst of this interaction, toward the end, he says some hard things. And I think the first time you hear them or read them, they might be a little troubling, so I'm gonna read them, and, and then Steve and I are gonna talk about them. So here's what he says. You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was put into effect through angels, but have not obeyed it. And so when they heard this, they're furious, they gnash their teeth, and Stephen is full of the Spirit, he looks to heaven, and they begin to cover their ears, uh, they drag him out, they stone him to death. He forgives them, as Jesus did on the cross, uh, before he dies. He's such an example of Christ and the way that grace has worked in his heart. Um, so anyway, it's a great story, it's true, but what fascinates me is that he had to say some hard things. So there's times in evangelism and our fulfilling the Great Commission, we have to say some hard things to people, right? Absolutely. Um, the gospel will offend people. It is offensive. And depending on the audience, depending on who you're talking to, depending on a couple different factors, but yeah, sometimes the truth is really hard to deliver and it can be feeling like a, a mallet. Um, yeah, yeah. But, well, tell us about the incident you had, you and your wife, on Valentine's sure. night. Sure. Yeah. So, um, because we were at a wedding on Valentine's Day, we decided to go out and have uh, a dinner and a movie on Friday. So we go to the mall and we had some extra time. So as we were going around the mall, um, I approach a, a kiosk and there's a young man there. And he asked me about my tattoo. My wife says, here we go. She walks <laughs> off. So we have a conversation. He says he wants to get a tattoo. And he says he's a Norse, which is uh, part of the Viking uh, religion, if to say it more uh, generally. But he was sharing. And of course, that opened up conversations about the gospel, about Jesus, about God, about hell. Um, he explained that his hell is different than our hell. And he had a very um, just obscure version of what hell really is. Um, there was a point though I shared with him that hell is going to be eternal separation from God. Mm -hmm. And he shared with me earlier that people would come and share the gospel with him. One girl constantly would come and share the gospel with him. And here I am again sharing the gospel with him. And I said, so hell could be a place separated from God where you just continue to hear the echo of the gospel being told to you by me, by others. And it was the most beautiful, precious gift given to you and you rejected it. I want him to lay down his head at night and think about that. Hmm. That's, a, that's a tough thing to say. And I think sometimes in evangelism, we want to be winsome and we want to win friends. And we, we realize in ministry, I think the longer we do this, that there are times we have, like a parent, you have to say hard things. Uh, you have to just confront uh, when there is misbehavior. Like even when you talk to people, nobody's gonna understand the gospel if they don't understand sin. So when you talk about sin, you got to talk about the law. Yes. And then everyone has this illusion or delusion that they're good when the Bible says there's no one good, not even one, Romans 3. So we have to talk about the law. We have to talk about sin that can be uncomfortable. I found it to be comfortable at times, and people can bristle, and what are you telling me? And Because if they admit they're sinful, they're bad, then they have to admit something's wrong, and I need to make it right. And then, of course, we know that leads them to the gospel because that's God's provision for forgiveness is Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. But we have to say hard things. So, hard things. Yeah, absolutely. For him, because of the way the conversation went, 
because he knew I cared about him, mm. I told him. I said, this is uncomfortable for me to have a conversation like this. So you just came out and said it? Oh, yeah. That's good. I'm just transparent and true. Good. I'm not gaining anything by doing it. Right. Right? I right. have to earn my way to heaven. Right. Christ did that. Yeah. So I opened up more opportunities to share with him, and he wants to talk about it. His name's Mateo. Um, I'll go see him again, and we'll have healthy conversations about Christ. And my hope is that he'll come to see Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Amen. Boy, may that be our heart today, wherever the Lord sends us. And let's not be afraid that if the Lord moves on our hearts and we have to say something uh, that might be difficult, that we'll have the courage to do that, and people will know we're doing that because we love them and we want to see them come to faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Why don't you lead us in prayer uh, as we close? Thank you. Dear Lord, you are so wonderful. Hmm. Oh, our words fail trying to describe how magnificent you are, hmm. how worthy you are, Lord. Lord, we come to worship you in many different ways, but sharing the good news is one of the ways I cherish most. Hmm. Lord, thank you. Give us opportunities that are evident to us, Lord, to, to share the gospel. Lord, just give us like a head start on our day that we want to come alongside you in your work mm. to impact your kingdom because we love you. Mm. We adore you, Lord. Yeah. And we want to see you glorified. Yeah. We want to see people come to know you, Lord, because our relationships with them mm. will then have substance mm. with you right in the center. We love you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Holy Spirit, lead us today. Open yes. our eyes to the opportunities yeah. and help us to be obedient in them. Yes. It's in your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.